been a week since 58 people were killed and hundreds more wounded at a concert in Las Vegas. With every mass shooting, the debate about guns in America becomes a hot button issue on the news, online, around the dinner table. It's everywhere. Not many people can find 100 percent agreement. Alex Miller joins us now. Um, you've been looking into this and in, in much of this, what you found is that uh, people's opinions on, on gun control, gun safety, and then how far the Second Amendment goes is in some ways contoured by these mass shootings. It is. Statistically, we see that when these tragedies happen, gun sales go up because people go into these stores afraid that their guns are going to be taken away. And after some research, I found that this cling to your guns kind of culture that we live in now is pretty new. The Second Amendment is treated across much of the United States as gospel. But basically since the ink was dry, how it should be interpreted has been intensely debated. Let's look at it word for word. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Scholars dispute which part of the amendment is most important. The opinions are vast. Some believe the original intent was to protect states from the federal government. Others believe James Madison wrote in the amendment only to protect himself from an uprising by his slaves. Many take the wording literally, as a right of Americans to have guns. Regardless of why the Second Amendment was created, it has been regulated many times over. In 1792, the government passed a law ordering every man eligible for a militia to acquire and register his gun. It was changed in 1903. More regulation came in the late 1960s, when then-Governor Ronald Reagan banned carry of loaded guns in public. He said he saw, quote, no reason why on the street today a citizen should be carrying loaded weapons. American gun culture shifted to how we see it today less than a decade later, with a push for an unaltered fundamental right. It would take nearly 30 years for a substantial decision to come down, with D.C. v. Heller in 2008. The handgun ban in D.C. was overturned, and Justice Antonin Scalia affirmed the individual right to bear arms. Even then, he concluded several exceptions needed to be made. Bans on unusual and dangerous weapons, and the prevention of domestic abusers and the mentally ill from obtaining guns. And yet, despite some of the most cherished conservative figures regulating the Second Amendment, the NRA sees the movement through one prism. Americans have an unlimited right to bear arms. I spoke with Dr. Alexandra Falindra about guns and how gun culture has become so polarizing in our country. Why do you think guns have become such a focal point of American culture? The U.S. is the only society that has enshrined something like the right to bear arms in the Constitution, so it has been elevated. The key reason behind it is that um, a reactionary movement that developed after uh, around the late 70s and really uh, became powerful in the 90s. The Supreme Court, aside from Heller, hasn't taken up many gun-related cases. Why is that? For uh, a long time, the NRA was very reticent about going to the Supreme Court. There was a very strong aversion because they feared that uh, taking it to the Supreme Court would actually provide an even stronger uh, collective interpretation. Do you think that there's going to be a point where the Supreme Court has to take up um, a gun rights related case? The demand for gun control is not as vocal. It's not as salient an issue. It's not as important an issue. People are not as emotionally connected to gun control as an issue on uh, the gun control side, uh, whereas gun rights activists are constantly alert about anything that has to do with gun control, and they're very politically involved. They receive information constantly about uh, what they're supposed to do and what's the next threat to gun rights. Part of the, that culture um, is is collecting 
collecting guns and collecting accessories. But there is this like underlying debate about those accessories, like high, ca- high capacity magazines. Do you foresee that being a place that could be challenged? Not according to the NRA. What we have failed to understand for the longest time is that the guns debate and the guns rights issue is not a policy issue. It's an identity issue. Just to go out there and say we need gun control because so many people have died this year, it's it's not an effective way to change minds uh, because really we're not changing minds here. We need to change hearts, and that's far more difficult. I'm curious, Alex, what she meant by that, the professor, when she said that this isn't you know, a policy debate where people are scared of losing the policy or their guns necessarily, but more identity? Yeah, people's, you know, entire identity is linked with gun culture in some places in our country. Uh, She's been studying this for a long time, and she says it's primarily with white gun owners, and white gun owners are actually 90% of gun owners in America, even though they only make up uh, 65% of the population. And it's been this way since uh, the 1970s when this was started being studied, and they said basically that People buy guns not necessarily because of the, just because of their security, because you wouldn't need 21, 22, 23 guns sure. to keep yourself safe. It's, they identify it um, as part of their citizenship, as part of their pride. And when they're told that there's a possibility that they might get their guns taken away, it's like the government is saying to them, we don't trust you. Such a complex issue. Mm-hmm.